Good morning, Coach. Happy holidays. I hope you had a wonderful uh, Christmas with your family. Yeah, thank you. Happy uh, Merry Christmas to all the listeners out there. Thank you. Appreciate that, Bill. Uh, you know, tough loss on Saturday to the Bengals. Ramondre Stevenson ended up fumbling there uh, towards the end of the game. What do you have to say to him so that that doesn't start snowballing after the miscue in the in the Raiders game and then the fumble this week? Uh, how do you kind of get him back to a good mental mindset so that doesn't that doesn't continue to snowball throughout the rest of the season? Well, Ramondre is a he's a good, really good competitor. He's one of our best players, and um, I'm sure he'll be ready to go. Bill, you talk about putting full games together. I mean, it's the tale of two halves when you look at again against Cincinnati. First half, you kind of you know struggle a little bit offensively, defensively. Second half, you're able to pick it up. You know, being able to look at the film, what were some of maybe the coaching points that you give these guys? You know, obviously getting ready for a very talented Miami Dolphins team about the importance of you know being able to play a full sixty minutes. Right. Well, we always talk about that, and that's always our goal. Um, and so we'll always keep trying to do that. But, yeah, that's that's important. We spotted them, you know, a, a pretty big lead there, 22-point lead. And um, when you put yourself in that position, then, then a lot of things have to go right from that point on. And uh, if something doesn't, then you can, you know, you can be in trouble. So, I try to do a better job playing a full 60-minute game. No doubt about it. Bill, was there something in particular you might have seen uh, that allowed you guys to make some good defensive adjustments there in the second half and, and shut out Cincinnati? Um, well, we, you know, we changed a couple things after the, you know, in that second series, and then kind of from then on, it was we tried to play them. About the same. Um, so, Bill, one of the change came. The change came more in the first quarter. Bill, one of the things that you always talk about is the ability to obviously create turnovers and not turn the football over. It seems like week in and week out defensively, uh, you guys put yourself in a position where you're creating opportunities uh, for for the offense and you're creating these turnovers. Talk about how important it is to continue to do that and how it does give you the opportunity um, to put the, the team in a position to win football games uh, to be able to create those turnovers. Well, the defensive staff and players work extremely hard on those uh, turnovers, as you know, Wiggy. Um, <clears throat> it's um, awareness. It's being opportunistic to, you know, catch the ball or scoop it up like um, Raekwon did in the um, in the Arizona game, or or Doug did in the Detroit game. Um, but kind of know when to scoop it up, when to fall on it. Um, and, you know, doing some good running. I mean, that was a great run by, by Marcus. Um, not sure how many how many players um, we have that would have made that run, but, you know, that's part of it, too, is good running skills with the ball in their hand. Um, so, yeah, just a combination of all those things, um, knowing who the targets are that we can have the best chance to get the ball off of and then take advantage of those opportunities when they come. Coach, Kendrick Bourne had a fantastic game for you guys on Saturday. Had six catches on nine targets for 100 yards and a touchdown. Is there any kind of plan to get him even more involved going forward here with the two final games of the season left? Well, everybody's involved in the passing game. It's the question of um, you know, what the coverage is and what the quarterback sees and you know, how, the, how, that, how the particular pattern that we have called plays out. So, Everybody's got to be ready to go and, and take advantage of their opportunities when they come. Bill, you talk about guys taking advantage of their opportunities, and you just spoke about uh, Marcus Jones and what he's been able to do. How difficult is it to be able to balance the fact that he's getting a lot of snaps on defense because there's some injuries that you're dealing with, but still he's being very productive as an offensive player Um to, to be able to balance those out, but also put them in a position on offense where, you know, defensively teams can't just focus on what he might do when he comes in the game. Yeah, that's, um, I think you've summed it up. <laughs> you summed up the answer pretty well in the question. Uh, 
Wiggy. You know, it's um, the time the time allotment in practice is um, and meetings uh, is is finite. There's only so much, and and uh, and then Marcus does you know meet extra with on the things that uh, take place at the same time to cover them, but I uh, just you know can't can't get into everything. Um, and so we pick our spots. You know, defense is a priority, um, and his role in the kicking game is a priority. And, and offensively, we've uh, kind of tried to, you know, take advantage of some opportunities and some openings to um, teach him a few things and let him uh, practice some things that we feel like would help the, um, <clears throat> you know, explosiveness and diversity of, of the offense. And, you know, he's done a great job of that. So, um probably about the way it's going to continue. Um, we can build a little bit more with him in there. Uh, it'll be hard for him to, you know, convert to a full-time receiver, you know, in the middle of the season like it happened this year. Um, that, that would just be, you know, too much. But, you know, all the guys that have done that in the past for us, uh, like Troy and Julian, you know, Mike Rabel, um, guys like that that, that played um, – some snaps on the other side of the ball. It was it was somewhat uh, restricted, but you know they were used in a way that that situationally we felt like they could help our team, and um, you know, this kind of falls into the same category. Bill Mack had uh, a decent amount of success attacking down the field uh, against the Bengals this week, uh, a lot more than he's had over the last couple weeks, actually. And is there something in particular you saw from Mack this week that allowed him to really have that success attacking down the field? Well, again, a lot of that uh, just you know plays into the the play and how it's covered and what the matchups are and so forth. So, and when those opportunities come up. Um, you know that's that's what he wants to do, and that's certainly what we want to do. Um, when that's taken away, and those opportunities aren't as good, we don't want to, you know, just throw it down there into into heavy coverage. And I don't, I don't think that's really the answer. So, um, you know, then you kind of try to work to where you feel like the defense is weaker and take advantage of that. So, um, some of those plays are dictated by by what happens on the other side of the ball. Not not every one of them, but, but some of them certainly are. So when we get those opportunities, we, we'll try to take advantage of them. Bill, the, the great thing about football is you never know how things are going to shake up in, in just the way the game is going. And, and, you know, Miami loses, and now you guys got a very talented Miami Dolphins team coming into – uh, but a team like Miami, they're so explosive. They have two dynamic playmakers uh, in Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. What are the things that you obviously, you know, got to focus on defensively uh, to be able to slow guys of, of their caliber down and just the weapons that they have on offense? What's going to be the biggest focus for you uh, as a defense uh, going against a team like Miami come this uh, Sunday? Well, the biggest thing anytime you play against explosive players, uh, whether it be those guys or we've seen them every week, you know, Chase and <clears throat> last week and um, Adams the week before and right on down the line, um, you know, of course, is they try not to give it to them in one play. Um, you know, you give up an 80-yard touchdown, there's that's it. Um, well, they gain some yards and you, you try to make them, you know, run – Eight, ten, twelve plays to to score, and you know, just try to keep the ball in front of you. So, guys like that, once they get behind you, it's how many people are going to catch them. Uh, so you want to make sure that that number one, it doesn't all happen in one play, and you can't play so so soft that you know they just walk the ball right down the field. I and mean, that's not the answer either. But there's some kind of balance in there where you, you know, definitely I want those guys to you know be scoring from you know, the other side of midfield or, you know, you have no chance to play defense after that. All right, Bill, we really appreciate the time. Uh, again, I hope you and your family had a wonderful Christmas and uh, have a happy new year. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again uh, in the new year and good luck on Sunday against Miami. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot.